Okay. okay. Does everybody see that? Yes. yes. All right. So <clears throat> this is the file that I sent you. It's an Excel based file. It's essentially set up um, identical to how the file in your uh, FPU book is set up as far as categories and everything. The beauty of this one that I added was if you look um, in column M uh, off to the right, I've added an actual amount, okay? So you can put your budget in the first column and then as you go through the month, you can just put your actuals in the other column and that way at the end of the month, you can see how close you got to your actual budget and where you may need to adjust the following month, okay? So that's kind of the neat part about this. I like using Excel because it's gonna do all the math for me and I don't have to worry about it. Um, Hey Jeff, can you scroll down? I, Bill's trying to scroll down it, but it's not his screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, so yeah, so we'll, we'll scroll down. Don't you hate it when you don't get to control the screen? No, of course I not. Do. <laughs> All right, so how this is set up is you can put, you can put in your month there, right? So um, we're looking at October. Okay. How the FB form starts is you put in your income first, okay? So we're gonna say, um, for this case, our base income is $6,000 a month, okay? Now the idea of this budget, just like the one in, just like the schedule in your book, is that in the end, this cell here should become zero. Oops. Okay, so so Go ahead. Uh, sorry, just a stupid question. That's that's your actual just take home after everything else, right? After you, everything else is automatically taken out of your check. That's strictly what shows up, right? Yep. This is your take home spending, your disposable income. Okay. okay. So it's after your health insurance deductions, your four hundred one k deductions, any of that stuff that's coming out ahead of time. It's after all of that. Gotcha. Okay. Um, good question. Okay. So just, if we just kind of go through this, um, you know, if we say our charitable giving, we're going to say maybe it's 500 bucks. Um, this has savings in here. So maybe you're not going to spend all your money on expenses, but you know that you're going to save some and you're trying to build your emergency fund. So you're going to put say 500 bucks in. Um, we hope to retire someday and not live off the government. So we're going to put a thousand dollars in. Um, if you have a mortgage, maybe it's fifteen hundred bucks, um, and you can kind of go down. We're just going to put some numbers in here for examples. You clearly don't write the checks for those. <laughs> those are some low numbers. <laughs> And if, if, some of these, if some of these categories don't work for you, you can put you can title them differently. You don't need to keep them. I mean, you you know, make the sheet so that it works for you. So I have, I have a lot of the regular income. Um, like we don't count like, like we've never counted on my income as an instructor, but then also as a master trainer, I've never we've never. So like anytime like that money comes in, it's just always been mine to do with whatever I want. It's always been kind of like finding dollars. Isn't it? That, but you know what I mean? That's the feeling though. It's like, oh, look at that. We didn't expect that. All the more reason for you to be doing this. <laughs> so, so should we should we like keep track of what I'm making with that? Because we re I don't think we are at all. It's so inconsistent. And there's it. absolutely no like requirement of me doing it. I mean, it's really like I don't know. What else we to do about that? So, but but you have a range. You have I mean, you have probably a lower limit that you know you're probably going to make each month right? That you're relatively confident with maybe 75% confidence it's going to come in. 
sometimes I won't do events. Like we only get, we get paid monthly. And so like, if I don't do an event in uh, September, like September, I didn't do an event. So in October, theoretically speaking, I wouldn't get a paycheck for it. Right. But then in October I did three. I mean, so like the baseline would be zero really. And then, you know, in October I had three events. So in November I'll get a pretty sizable check. But, but you, you cut, how far in advance do you schedule those events? Uh, anywhere from six weeks on up. So you might at least know with certainty as you're planning the following month, right? Yes. So, and yeah, I mean, if you're paid the month after the fact, right? Yeah. So whatever you did in October, you know, you're going to get paid for November. So you could add it to your November budget okay right. that, that helps yeah i didn't i didn't think about that and it's we get paid at the end of the month so even if my event was say the first weekend in october i would get i don't get paid for it till the last week of november so okay so that changes my thinking on that then because i was thinking we create a budget that yes. is every month. that's just the way it is so apparently that's not the case no, it, yeah, I mean, uh, if it has to change for you from month to month, that's fine. There's, yeah, there's no issues with that. Uh, okay. you know, be flexible with that. For like Susie and myself, you know, it was, it was a long time goal for us that um, she be able to quit working uh, at the bank and be a stay at home mom. So when we started doing the budget, all of our living expenses were we were trying to budget that out of my salary. Everything Susie made was over and above that. And so when she was making that money, it was going towards either additional debt payment. You know, we do uh, principal payments that month or we would do additional savings that month or whatever it was. So um, I would suggest trying to manage it in that manner if that's kind of how your income is coming in. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah, that's helpful, thank you. So, so yeah, you'll have one of these for every month and it will be, you know, it could very well be different. Um, and that's just okay. I mean, understanding how your expenses come and go, it'll be different over the course of the year, but you should be able with, you know, some relative consistency, be able to understand, um, what your expenses are for the following month off of what your income is. So, so as I spread all my income out here, you can see as I get to the, uh, the bottom here, this equals zero. So I have 6,000 coming in and I've accounted for all 6,000 of it. So that's what this is intended to work out as. And then you can just put your actuals in here. Over the course, if you keep track of these, you know, we recommend keeping track of them over a course of 12 months because you'll have expenses. Um, that only happen once a year or twice a year, right? So like for, um, for Susie and I, we don't have a mortgage anymore, but we have, to, we have to set money aside every month to pay our real estate taxes and our homeowner's insurance because it's no longer taken out of our escrow mortgage payment, right? So, you know, we set aside 500 bucks or 400 bucks a month or whatever uh, that covers all that stuff. Um, you know, Christmas, this is a great time to start budgeting for Christmas. We all know it's going to arrive on December 25th. Happens every year. You know, if you're putting away a hundred bucks a month into a savings account, when Christmas gets here, it's a whole lot more fun going Christmas shopping with an envelope full of a thousand dollars worth of cash than with the credit card because the credit card's only fun for about a day. And then you want to throw up the next day cause you just realize you overspent way too much money. <laughs> So does that make sense on the uh, kind of the zero based budget? Yeah. yeah. It's a lot better, yeah. Okay. The allocated spending. <laughs> okay. This is this is obviously helps you to manage your money over the course of the month. Okay. Now, if you are if you have a sizable um, emergency fund that's already built up, you may not need the allocated spending because you ha you have money in your checking account that's there. You're not playing it near the edge, and you can manage your month 
month to month with just your zero based budget. Okay. However, if your cash in your checking account is tight and you're running kind of close to the edge, the allocated spending sheet is supposed to kind of help you manage as your money's coming in to know when it's going out. Okay. And that's the only thing we're trying to accomplish with this. To be perfectly honest with you, we don't use the allocated spending anymore. We just use the monthly budget. We have the fixed budget that we run off of. So we don't use it. If And, you know, I want you to get discouraged and frustrated with it. It's, if you can work it with your monthly cash flow budget, great. Make it work that way. Okay. But this is just supposed to help you give a week by week look at the month. Okay. Does that make sense? No, I guess I, uh, I missed something. The allocated spending is the weekly breakdown of the monthly budget. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Okay. So I make, I make, uh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was saying more things are kind of tight. Is that? Exactly. If you're, if you're kind of running tight, but, this, this allocated spending, you know, we make, uh, we had $6,000 a month on our other sheet. So, um, this, if I, if I get paid every other week, so halfway through the month, I'm going to get 3000 And at the end of the month, I'm going to get 3000 So this is kind of showing me when my money's coming in. Okay. Okay. So of this 3000 in the in the end, this should tie back to your monthly cash flow. Okay. My monthly cash flow plan, let's go back to this real quick had uh, $500 of charitable giving, okay? Yeah. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna take 250 out here, and I'm gonna take 250 out here, okay? Uh, my emergency fund is 500, and my retirement is 1,000. Um, so let's say I choose to do my emergency fund all right there. And I, my retirement, I do like that, okay? So we, we can go through this the whole time, you know, all the way down. But in the end, these categories should match your total on the monthly cash flow. It's just okay. showing it by week when it's going to happen. Okay. Does that make sense, everybody? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the idea would be is to not, you know, you get your, your paycheck the first part of the month, but maybe the mortgage isn't due until the second part of the month. You don't want to spend more money at the beginning and then not have enough left over for the mortgage. Right. It's kind of the idea. Right. So the, and you know, the allocated spending, it doesn't necessarily mean you're writing a check that week. It just means you're setting aside money from that paycheck for an expense that you were either going to have that week or sometime in the near future that you're aware of that you're planning for. Yeah. Okay. So that's what the allocated spending's uh, designed to do. You know, like I said, in the end, your income and your expenses should all tie back to what your monthly income and expenses are on your monthly cash flow plan. It just okay. spreads it out over the weeks and when you think it's going to happen. Okay. And I, you know, I don't know about any other coaches, um, but with us being paid weekly, I definitely have weeks where I have a lot more volume than other weeks. And I don't know if that's just from being newer at it, but for me, I have weeks where, you know, my check can be twice as big as the previous week. And it's pretty predictable based on when people's HD orders are going through. Right the end of the month to people hitting success club towards the end of the month. Right. right. So to do a, on this Excel spreadsheet, do you actually, you put in all the, this is all done, both the allocated and the monthly, that's all done before the month begins, right? You yep. break it all down. So yep. 
as the month goes on, are, do you plug in the numbers actually spent in each category? Yeah, so what I do, um, we use uh, Quicken uh, to, to track our spending. Uh, it downloads from the bank all the transactions. So I can go and Quicken, and I actually probably am a little ADD about this because I probably do it way too often, but anyway, <laughs> I can go into the bank, I can download what transactions have occurred that week or in the last 24 hours. <laughs> And I can put them in here as an actual um, and just kind of track stuff that way. So, and then I can see where I've missed, you know, because I may come back and say, well, you know, the emergency fund, we're, you know, Susie made extra money this month, so we put in $750 instead of $500. Okay. Now, just as a side note, um, column Q here. Are the FP ranges these are just kind of a national average it doesn't necessarily mean that's what you should be targeting for um, it's just kind of an average range for the average income family okay um, so don't get too tied up into them we have them there calculated for you so you can kind of see what they are but uh, if you're not within that range I wouldn't panic about it, um, but it kind of gives you a guideline as to what you may be needing, maybe wanting to target. Um, you know, uh, from a, the ones I would definitely try to target would probably be the housing ones. Um, he sells that pretty hard, but you know, food. You know, if you are two successful people and you're making half a million dollars. A year, you probably sh either way shouldn't be spending fifty thousand dollars on food, or you know what I'm saying. <laughs> say, actually, our our house is only an eighth. So what percentage is that? I don't, I don't know. Percentage, is, but half of a quarter. So like what, fourteen, ten percent, something like that. Yeah. I, I would bet that our food is a lot higher than ten percent. <laughs> We like food and good food. <laughs> we, uh, and when you start tracking that, you'll see um, when Susie and I first started doing this, it was like, holy cow, we're spending a ton of money on food and eating out. It was ridiculous. We decided it was a good thing we exercised or we would be huge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, Bill and I do enjoy fine dining. <laughs> <laughs> So it, it definitely helps bring, you know, stuff to light, uh, certain items like that. Um, so that's why I've, I've added the actuals in here because we've always encouraged people who attended the classes, you know, be sure to track your actuals to set a budget, but never track your actuals is kind of pointless because you don't really, you don't know if you ever hit your target. So. Well, and it should make planning your next month easier if you know how close you can get. Right. Too. Here's the thing about budgets. Um, you know, I worked in finance for 20 years in accounting. Um, my primary function in my last role was budgeting. So I did uh, budgeting for a $30 million company uh, every week. Um, we had to do a 12 month budget. What I will tell you about your, what I tell, what I'll tell you about your budget is it will be wrong okay our goal here is to get, our goal is to get close okay you will not hit it perfect you just need to get close okay I'm glad you said that <laughs> <laughs> so you certain categories you'll hit perfect right a mortgage payment you know is a mortgage payment not a problem right utilities you will never hit your utilities dead on they're always different, you know. Food is really hard to hit dead on, you know. Your blow money can be really hard to hit dead on unless you're on a really tight cash only envelope budget. So oh, that was, that was something, um, you just mentioned something I wanted to ask you, Jeff. Um, yep. What did you say right before you were talking about spending? Oh, um, so. 
I, I don't know, but maybe I'll maybe can correct me if I'm not presenting this this right. But like, so we kind of, I, I think we kind of sort of track our business expenses, expenses, sort of kind of in with our, I mean, it's separate, but. But what we've done is incorporated. Okay, so all our income, all her income, goes straight to our business account. And then I pull it out of the business account and put it into the other accounts for, like, as a distribution of profit into our other normal daily living accounts. Correct. Is that what you're doing with that? Yeah. Okay. So what's your question? Well, I don't know what my question is. Just is that okay? I mean, like, does that affect or change anything or? I, I mean, think you, so. I wouldn't think so. <laughs> it shouldn't. It shouldn't really change. Anything. You have to budget. You have to budget for those expenses either way. Now, you may choose to do two budgets. You know, if you want to do one for your personal, and if you want to try and do one for your incorporation. Um, but either way, you need to try and budget for the total. Um, you know. Uh, uh, let's see. I figured if I'm, if I'm doing it, I'm probably just going to do it all as one. Just create a category for the business expenses. And that's um, that's what we've done with uh, with Susie. Is in Quicken, uh, we just have separate categories set up. Um, it's a lot of the same expense categories, but right before the expense name, it says you know Inspired Fitness. Um, Oh, okay. oh no! Right. So, um, <laughs> did you budget? Did you budget? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I thought we had. We it's telling us we only have ten minutes left. We, um, I think you can always end and then just get right back on. Okay. If we, have to do, if we have to do that, it'll give me a new. I think it'll give me a new number, and I'll just post it in the rock in the financial group. Yeah, or we can use mine too. It's fine either way. Okay. Any other questions? I think so. I think we're good now. Yeah. Especially now that we have your program. That's awesome. Yeah. So once you get past this, this is really the technical part of the whole course. You get the hang of this. Um, you know, the rest of it's. Some of it can be a little difficult to take, but it's a lot easier uh, number of class. What's that? How long do you think it would take for me to like take just a second to let it figure it all out? Like the first time to fill it out and do it. Keeping in mind that he has everything in QuickBooks. I mean, I got all the information. I know what's going on, but uh, it's not as organized as this is. Right. So the first time, I would expect it should really take you no more than an hour. Okay. 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 Uh, for, and that's for everybody. I mean, if you spend more than an hour on it, you're probably putting way too much thought into it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Understand that it is a budget. There are certain categories that are they're going to be wrong. Uh, our goal here is to get close. And to make sure that we're in control of the we're in control of the money, right? Just like your meal plan, you know, you can set a meal plan for two thousand calories. Hitting two thousand calories exactly is not the easiest thing in the world to do, right? I mean, same thing with your budget. You know, you set your budget, you'll get close, and over time, you will continue to get closer and closer and closer. So. Well, you know, you make, a, you make an interesting example of a meal plan. You know, you, you, you gave the example of what's well, kind of like meal planning. You know, you know what you get ahead of time. Well, it seems like, like our finances go is trying to create a meal plan when right. you're going out on random dinners. There's, there's, there's so many so unexpected variables that come up, and there's so many we have no choices, we got tos that pop up. And, and it's. it's that's what's been the trouble, it seems like, with us is that, okay, yeah, we have to adopt it, but there's so much much stuff that just pops up that's like, we got no choice, we've got to. And it doesn't fit in the budget. And it just, I got, I got, I got, I've been that. nervous about is how do you wrangle that? I don't know. Does that make sense? 
Well, I, I think, I mean, if you look at your meal plan, and I think we have our ideal meal plan, and then we have what really happens, you know, when you have that unexpected time when you have to eat out or whatever. And I think the idea with the plan is you know, you know where you're headed. And so, you know, you make choices that get you as close to that as possible. Um, so, you know, you may not have a choice in the matter, but you kind of work it into your overall kind of goal of where you're headed. And that makes sense. All the time, over and over and over and over again, and it's fine. <laughs> well, because that's not too much. <laughs> you know so i would i would you know look at it in using these categories try and use the you know if you need to change some go ahead and change some you should be able to get relatively close and then I'll, we have this um we have this category right here called blow money mm -hmm. right everybody should probably have something in that category that's so, five thousand. Maybe it's not five thousand. <laughs> I don't get five thousand in blow money. <laughs> right? Maybe it's five hundred bucks. This is for the. Oh, we got to do this, right? Or whatever. Now you'll have other. Uh, blow money isn't necessarily an emergency. Okay. Now yeah. your refrigerator goes out. That's an emergency. That's not blow money. That will come from your emergency fund. Okay. Blow money. okay. Your blow money is, you know, when you get to the point, you can have a little bit more money and it's, you know, you want to go golfing one day with the buddies, you got 50 bucks in the pocket and you can go golfing. So is the blow money something you allocate after you've allocated everything else and then whatever is left over? Is blow money. I would. I think. I think everybody should plan on having some level of blow money. It should be part of your base budget to have some level of blow money. Okay. Nobody wants to go through a budget or a plan and be handcuffed with freedom to do nothing. Right. Everybody involved should have some level of blow money. For some, that may be fifty bucks a month. For others, it may be 500 bucks a month, but what it's whatever you're comfortable with between the two of you is what okay. it is. You know, so like for Susie and I, we have 200 bucks a month blow money for each of us. For each oh. of us, she gets 200, I get 200. We just at the first of the month, we write a check for 200 dollars worth of cash. She gets her cash, I get my cash. I can do whatever I want with it. I can save it up for three months and go buy something big. Or I can spend it week to week. Okay, so you said if you have to restrict other areas in order to have a certain budgeted amount of blow money, then you should do it. If you have to restrict certain areas? Yeah, yeah like, like, uh, uh, well, like, like for us, us, there's a whole list of there's there's this, this is kind of and, and some, you know, maybe every other week or so, there's like hardly anything left over. And there's no extra money to do anything with. So are you well, say you really need to have low money. So, so you should restrict, restrict some of the other categories category. in order to ensure that you have a, a consistent level of blow money every week or month or whatever. Well, every month, it? yeah. Well, because I think then you have to make those, sometimes I think you have to make those hard choices of, you know, what do you want to spend that blow money on? What I'm saying is, is the blow money category a solid category, just like electric bill or mm -hmm. groceries or. I think. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I mean it is for us. I would, I, and I would, I would recommend it be a consistent category every month, and if and keep it as to a consistent amount as you can. You know, <laughs> now. You know, you have other stuff that you you may be saving for. You know, um, we're gonna we want to put hardwood floors throughout the house. Um, we know it's gonna cost us twenty five hundred dollars. That's not part of our blow money. That's not part of our budget. We're doing that in a savings account. We're setting aside money each month in a savings account. Once the money's there, we're gonna go spend twenty five hundred bucks to go buy material to put in hardwood floors. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 
We're about to run out of time. I'm going to try to set up a new one. Any other questions? Well, I just think one of my frustrations with him is like, it's always in his mind, it's like feast or famine. And so it's like, I never know what to, what to expect. Like, are we like, woohoo, it's random money, or like, don't buy anything? Because it literally it can change in a 24 hour period. And I'm like, what the hell? Um, and I guess I hate the dr drama that comes with that. So that's just a side note, I guess. But things, it's not, nothing's consistent. It'll be yeah. one week we'll get. X amount of dollars from Beachbody, and then the next week it's X amount 